Hello and welcome to the Sydney Film Festival Virtual Edition, the Documentary Australia Foundation Award for Best Documentary. Really proud to have our law screening in this program and also to have the director here, Cornell Aziz, and the producer, Taryn Lafar, here to talk about their film. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much, Jenny. Um, I wanted to kick off by uh, asking Cornell, I understand that uh, some of your family are actually in the police force and I wonder whether that was the thing that drove you or inspired you to start making this film? Um, I have a lot of uh, family members that are in the police force, but um, close members is my stepmother and my brother. Mm -hmm. um, he actually was a part of the Queensland police force but uh, about a month ago he transferred went through the academy again and is now in the WA police force yeah. so so that you certainly had some inspirations and some experiences you started making the film yeah um you know you hear the, the stories from the family about the you know the hardships of being an indigenous officer in you know the police force and the kind of um uh stuff you have to deal with on a daily day basis which is you know pretty heavy sometimes when they come back and taryn what was it that uh, drew you to this project to this issue um frankly for me i found it completely fascinating and it just was a no-brainer for me, as soon as I heard that there was an indigenous run police station where the, where the police officers were engaging with the community when it came, comes to language and culture, it, it immediately conjured that's a good working practice because that's very much how I work with, with what I do in the screen industry. It's about engaging with people where they're at, mm -hmm. with what culture, where, where, where the culture in the place we're at. Um, so for me, it was interesting i'm curious as well about um the decisions to become a police officer because considering our history so for me it was definitely about opening up um a, a space that was new to me i don't have um in my line in particular i don't have um police officers in the family but i was really curious about what it meant to be an indigenous police officer and did either of you have a connection to Warakurna and or to that region before you started making the film? I didn't. I didn't know that I had a connection to Warakurna until I actually went out into the community and started engaging with the community. And uh, I met Mr. Newbury, who, which uh, after finding out, you know when you first meet Mob, they're like, who are you, who are you, where are you from? And we got our connections and I found out that he was actually good friends with my grandfather. And that um, he lived for uh, a few months up in um, the Kimberleys with my grandfather. So automatically I had a connection via Mr. Newbury and um, which I did not know. Uh, and and um, how long did you actually film there? Did you have to make lots of visits or one longer trip or what was the process? Uh, um, in regards to the process, we kind of did a bunch of communications over the phone and one of the, the people that I was speaking to when it came to the community um, permissions and involvement was Ms Daisy Ward. Uh, mm -hmm. And so she was she was very much um, one of the front faces on the phone and doing it that way. And then we went to Warakuna to sit down with the bosses and to do the permissions process and basically talk through the project from where we were think what we were thinking and then to see what the what the locals thought to the to the the idea of sharing what the this the story of the police station being run there by um, Sergeant Revis Ryder and um, Sergeant Wendy Kelly. So there was a process, a couple of oh, a week in us also. We were there for the for the recce, mm -hmm. um, and then we, all those communications kept going until we went back um, to film. And we were only there for uh, a couple of weeks, but we were kind of in a predicament. And this is where the community was really, you know, really. Uh, under, they came to the party and understood what we were doing with our framework in the screen industry and we kind of pushed it to get it filmed earlier before those guys had to go out to do law. 
L O R E law, which which when the men go out, it can be up to three or four months. So we we were out there for a, a you know couple of weeks intensively. Mm. Yeah. And and with Sergeant Wright and Sergeant Kelly's like that, their personal history, their stories are incredibly emotional. I I have to say when I first saw the film, I was surprised um, at that. Sorry, I just stopped because there was a plane going over. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I first saw the film, I was really surprised and incredibly moved by it because of those personal stories of Sergeant Kelly and Sergeant Ryan um, and their, their histories. Uh, are quite, and they're so open to the camera. Can you, um, can you talk a little bit about how your approach might have changed once you heard those stories or did you know them when you started out with, with the project? Perhaps Cornell? Uh, so, um, some of the stuff we were privy to, and but it wasn't until further conversations that we we learned a bit more about them. Mm -hmm. And it was the same with the community, with um, you know the stories of policing incidents and stuff. It was sort of um, we had an idea of how we wanted to, the story to go, and you know how we could touch on the policing and the interaction. But it wasn't until we got into the community that we learned sto you know stories that sound good and were amazing and we want to put them in the documentary but then we had to be aware that it was they were telling the stories because they wanted to tell the story to us but not to uh, a wider public so it would, we gained enough trust to get personal stories but then we also had to juggle that, um, that fine line of, okay, yes, that would be amazing to put in the documentary, but we will not put it in the documentary because it, it was in confidence kind of thing. So, um, and I believe Taryn, Taryn with the communications with uh, Wendy and Revis, got to learn a bit more about those backstories, uh, more than I did until I got to the community. So um, Taryn might be able to talk to that. Yeah, so in regards to um, working with Wendy and Revis, um, we actually, so, so, and I need to mention as well that I'm a co-producer. Um, my co-producer is Sam Bodie-Field of Periscope Pictures and um, he actually, we, we went and met with Wendy and Revis when they were in Perth. Um, mm -hmm. We're both based in Perth, Cornell's based in um, New South Wales and Sydney. So we went and met with them and we sort of opened up those lines of communication with those with those two quite early in the piece. And really I think, um, you know, their stories are, have been shared publicly but not obviously in this format and in this forum um, in regards to their backstories. But I, I think it's about acknowledging that I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think Wendy and Revis are uh, unusual. I think that we're going to see more um, Indigenous police who are happy to speak to the big truth, their big truths, which is the, the reasons why you get into the force and the complications in, involved in that in that in that relationship, both with your family members and your community. But they were both very open to their mm -hmm. own, and I think that's part of that has helped them do their job, is that they're real people with real struggles who have come to grow and to learn from their own, um, so, you know, their own lives. And it's it feeds into the good work that they do is because they are open, they, they understand that, you know, we're all human and that that allows for a better relationship when you're dealing with people. If you feel that you're not better than or bigger than but you're equal to, it actually just helps you do the job, you know, with respect. And people will respect you for being open too about your about your, where you come from. I think that really, that their openness has really been instrumental in, in how they do their work and the success of that work. 
And that certainly comes across in the film. Um, I wonder if you could talk about the importance of telling stories like this. And obviously this was made with the support of NITV and Screen West, but the, the importance of telling these stories both for the Indigenous community, but Australia widely. Um, that's, it's, it's a big reason why I got into filmmaking was to tell those stories, the stories that weren't being told in mainstream media. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, and also from our perspective, um, you know, you, you hear a lot of, we're the, one of the most documented races on, on the face of the earth, um, but we don't have our perspective. And I come from a line of filmmakers. My mother is a, a filmmaker and I have an auntie who's a producer. And so I, I was around that, that that sort of um, world, but then I gravitated towards filmmaking. But I um, I started as an editor, and so I'm sitting in those dark rooms, listening to other people tell their stories, and you know, I, I wanted to tell my story in my perspective, and so I um took the leap to become a director and a cinematographer, so I could get out and tell those stories and. The, the big thing for me was to tell stories from our region and not not tell anybody else's story um, but our own. And I, and I believe that you recently completed a director's um, placement on Saw and you worked on the Sapphires as well. Can you talk a bit about the experience between shifting between those big productions and something that's obviously um, not such a, hasn't got quite so many dollars in or people on the ground? So my background is that sort of run and gun documentary making, sort of, um, you know, a, a cameraman, a soundie and a producer and that's, that's, that's your crew. Um, so to work on productions like the Sapphire and um, Thor, it was you know an eye opener to the, the machine of filmmaking, um, and also the, the difference, the nuances between um, Australian budgets to Hollywood budgets. You know, um, on on Sapphire, we we're churning out like five minutes of screen time per day. But yeah, on Ragnarok, we're, we're only churning out 40 seconds of screen time per day, you know, and, and then you're, you're dealing with uh, more cameras, um, more crew, more talent. And so it was good to see the difference of how both directors handle those um, um, challenges. And so it was great for my development to be on those two productions. I um, really enjoyed it. And I think we've got time for one more question. And I know, Taryn, you've worked on a lot of productions. You've um, worked in all sorts of different uh, uh, television and other pieces. And I wonder, can you talk some, we often hear about the difficulties of filming or producing in remote uh, areas, but I wondered if you could also talk about the, the pleasures. What was the really good things about working in an Indigenous community and uh, the 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 better side of it, I suppose. Uh, I'm happy to talk to the the bounty really that's that's mm -hmm. involved when you're working um, outside of the the city limits. And no disrespect to to people that um, come from the. I mean, my next, one of my other projects is very much a metro city project, mm -hmm. so um, so, I tick, so that, that's a good thing. But for me personally, um, that I. And lots of these stories and the opportunities um, and the peop and people's I, I'm, a, I'm an advocate for supporting people get telling their stories and if I can assist in any way basically as long as it's West Australian first is my is my main sort of catch cry but really I'm Australian um, Australian filmmaker but for me it's the I find it more challenging working in the city to be honest I find the traffic painful. <laughs> Um, navigating that stuff. The issues are different um, and you, you have to switch up your mentality and how you work as a filmmaker because you have to get into the time, the space that you're in when you're in, when you're in communities or when you're um, in small towns. You kind of have to shift gears and work with people on their terms and I like the challenge of that. I don't want people to come to my party. I want to come to theirs 
kind of thinking. And and really I think uh, like from a producer point of view, I don't think because I've only I primarily have worked regionally and remote. For me, it's it, that's my first first um, way of doing business. So for me, it's not unusual. I find it more challenging the other way around. <laughs> but people are open. People uh, want to have a voice. They understand the opportunity of screen um, media, of, of TV and film, and it, and people are proud. So uh, I believe in in supporting people being Aboriginal people getting their stories on screen and having a voice and being counted in that in the space, you know. And the stories and the people are completely remarkable and inspiring. And it is it's 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 energy. It's work that gives you energy, you know. It is a remarkably inspiring film, I have to say. So congratulations to both of you and thank you and good luck in your competition. We're going to announce the winner on the 18th of June, so look out on that date. Um, And good luck with your future projects too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Enjoy the Sydney Film Festival. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you and thanks to NITV and Screen West, of course.